Alrighty, welcome to the video. It is the morning of the Tour Divide. I'm just grabbing some quality Canadian coffee and then uh, I'll be off heading over to the other side of Banff to kick this off. Um, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. Um, good job ahead of me and a lot of learning. Into it. It's uh, an hour and a half in, and it's amateur hour over here. For some reason, my Garmin hasn't got base maps. <laughs> and I should have checked, but I've travelled all over the world. I've never had an issue. So there's no roads or anything on my Garmin. So the route file is just going from point to point to point. So it's very inaccurate, um, obviously. So. I've got my backup navigation, which is Gaia, which is not ideal using the phone battery and things, but you live and you learn. I just need to somehow get a base map on it. Well, it's 2 p.m. on day one. I haven't been getting much footage. I've just been <laughs> marginally stressing out about this lack of map scenario, getting lost three times. Not lost, just overshooting. Crap preparation on my behalf. Overlooked it, but shout out to the scenery on day one, which I have not documented. It's been ridiculous. Um, now it's mellowing out as we're getting down towards Coco. But it was beautiful back there. Heading up Coco Climbs. It's got me sweating. Well, <laughs> after a couple of hours, I'm pretty sure I'm at the top of what they call Coco Climbs. Hiking away, that was, um, Quite steep, quite hard going. Well, maybe it's not over, but anyway. Woo, it's weird over this side of the hill. Okay, so I got the Fernie last night, made the call to get a hotel room for too many hours, tried to fix the Garmin, couldn't, didn't get too much sleep, so, bit of a, not ideal, but we're on the way. In terms of the dots, we're way back, <laughs> um, but, oh well, it's a bit of a regroup, and into it now, at like 2am. And a lovely fresh mountain lion paw print and it has rained within the last two hours. So he's up there somewhere. So I've had about six hours to ponder my actions last night and I'm pretty disappointed. Definitely caved into weakness, you know, I was wet, soaked cold because I sat there as soon as I got to Fernie trying to fix my navigation and then just ended up wasting six hours you know trying to fix the nav and then failing and only ending up getting two hours sleep just crap stuff but we've learnt and we've learnt on night one so 
hopefully that weakness is gone. I mean, the number one attribute, I think, of doing well in this race isn't fitness, it's mental toughness. And last night, I just apple crumbled. Zero mental toughness. Not beating myself up. I'm new to this shit. And I learnt. I learnt by losing a lot of the time. The front of the race is checked out for now. Um, but we're still pushing on. Just an hour at a time. Cooking down here. Just completed a big pass, Golden Pass. I think it was up to 1,900 meters, and then just did a big descent down to the lowest point of the whole route, which I think is eight or 900 meters, and it is hot. After a foggy, cold morning, it's quite nice. First hurdle, Canada ticked off. Here's the U.S. border. Uh, Canada, you were stunning. And uh, Tim Horton's apple fritters will always have a place in my heart. Hey bear! Yep, that was a grizzly. Pretty damn close. Got the heart rate up a bit. Yeah, probably gonna give that 5 or 10 to settle to be honest. Just came around that bend and just jammed on the brakes. Just in time. Woo! Good size, good size. Read me to pass. Woke up, finally got everything packed up. Took me a bit long, first time around. Then Ted King just comes flying past. So I've got a bit of a light to follow for a little bit. I'm all about getting proper food in, I've decided. And there's a Hungry Bear Bar and Grill, which is actually 10 minutes right off course. I don't want to waste too much time, so I just gave them a call and said, can you start cooking the burger now? And I'm gonna ride off course, get it, and then ride back to the course. She didn't really understand my accent, but they're cooking something. Here we go, Let's see if this worked out. What's going on? Is it 
my feet are swelling and then my toes are rubbing on the end of the shoe. I think they're ripping off the toenails or something. And when I dip them, they'll shrink back up. Good for the legs too. And get the salt out of the shabby. Cruising my way up Richmond Peak. Actually not really cruising. I'm pushing because uh, I want to get to Lincoln before the service station closes at 10. I've got a combination there, dry up the bivvy, clean a few items, do a bit of sort of <laughs> body assessment. But yeah, ideally I'd, I'd get there before 10, stock up at the service station so I can leave in the early hours and head out to Helena. So I'm pushing. Well, my feet are swollen and they're just trying to burst out the side of my shoe. Very painful. Um, I gotta cut them open. Just rode through a bit of a rainstorm and I have arrived in Avando. Avando. Ovando. Just got to Lincoln at the log lodge accommodation. It was pissing down when I arrived. So I kicked off at 3.30 in the morning. Um, for the last hour and a half it's been very slow progress going up Stemple Pass I think it's called. Um, I thought because I ate so much last night that I'd be pretty good with just a, you know, coffee, milk in the morning, but I feel very weak, so I might have to eat some more. It's uh, pretty grim up here to be honest, very cold, misty, and uh, it's a rugged zone. Ooh. Having a shocker of a morning. Light headed. Just had a coughing fit. I'm just pushing. <laughs> Which is very uncharacteristic of me. I'll come around. Just pedal through it. So I've had a like 750 mils of chocolate milk and finish my Pringles a couple of swigs of coke and I am still flat cooked I um, can hardly press the pedals to be honest so I'm a bit worried it's 50 more k's to get to Helena couple of passes, I don't think they're too big. Woo. Taking some pit stops here. Ignore all that last shit. I got to Helena. I ate Burger King. I ate some corn dogs. Hello. And now I'm alright. Hello, morning. We are up the top of Lava Mountain, up about 2,000 meters, so it's a lot cooler. And I have got a pile of energy now. 
We're good to go. Sincerest apologies about my behaviour this morning. That was just inexplicable. I was the most negative human on the planet, but we're good to go now for a bit. <laughs> Lovely up here. Well, I've got a face to the name for these places, you know. I've seen the, I've seen the YouTube videos, done the course prep, but yeah, a bit different in real life. A bit different. So I haven't mentioned how far through I am. That point down there, Helena, was 1,000 kilometres in to the race. That's a good stint to hit. Three and a half days in. The single track actually goes on forever. It's pretty cool. Fitting time for a brand new Red Bull flavor. Juneberry it's called. I'm not sure. Probably a six out of 10. Currently under a motorway bridge, just coming off Lava Mountain, full lightning storm, a lot of rain, drench, but it's not the wetness, it's just so, so cold, absolutely shivering down there, I'm going to try and put some more clothes on and just keep moving rather than stopping here and basing it. Old car mechanic here. Um, let me borrow his pressure washer. Rolling into Butte, Montana. Um, so, still trying to do the 300k a day program. Today I'm on 210. Got 90k to go, including Felisa Ridge, which is going to put me well up over four and a half thousand meters climbing. So, if I can get that done in the shocking first eight hours, I'll be over the moon. We'll see. That was 44 American dollars with a resupply. So I think there's a couple of hundred miles stint. I'm always carrying extra though. I'm very scared of running out. Uh, a lot of local dot watches in Butte coming out to say good day. Just yell out the windows. Here's another one, follow me up the hill. Pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you. Another news, my left quad is fucked. Oh, here we are. It's like one or something, halfway up through the ridge. Here's the rig. And I've, ever since watching some YouTube, I've been keen to stay in the, the Bushman's Hilton. Plenty of room, just for a couple of hours. Nobody around. Lovely. Night time. Get a few hours. Road. Just had a big lightning storm pass through, so I'm really hoping it's rideable. Otherwise, we've had a shocker. It's touch and go, flogging a little bit. A 
This has been the worst soft crap climb ever. It's taken forever, like 10 hours. So as well as the riding today being pretty damn difficult, I've completely blown out my left quad. So I'm gonna get some accommodation and uh, Lima, apparently you pronounce it, and um, try and rest it up, stretch it, hopefully get back on track, but I'm basically down to one leg. So, I got four and a half hours sleep, then pushed on. The leg was good for the first 10 minutes. I've been out for two or three hours now. So, in a lot of pain. And also the service station in Lima was closed when I got there, so. I'm running on reserves of food. Thankfully I got a few Rhino gels. I think I've still got another 80k or so, at least before resupply. So it's just figuring out when to use them. But it's rough. Every pit, I don't know what's going on with his legs, to be honest. I've been steering at the banks of the road, and then, then like. Just telling myself, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have a lie down. That feels, that looks real good. And I'm so tired, and I'm pedaling like crap anyway. And then I get closer, and I'm about to pull over, and I manage to talk myself out of it by saying it's a crap bank or it's wet or something. But the struggle is real this morning. No denying that. I mean, I'm crawling, I'm pedaling in waterproof pants. <laughs> uh, I'm cold. I don't even know whether it's that cold or not. Just I'm cold. Barren, barren here. Montana's wild. Big change. Probably can't see in the GoPro. A couple of stags up there. Not helping. So I'm now in Idaho after a shit day yesterday with a very sore quad. Only did 200 Ks. And then this morning was terrible. I had to walk up a couple of the climbs. Um, so it's been a very rough 24 hours at least. But I'm starting to come around now, hopefully. Just about on 200 Ks for today. Um, and it's five in the afternoon, so I'll try and get to 250 or so, depends what the terrain's like. So I'll show you my cockpit setup. Got my cell phone there, beer spray on the side, Garmin, with very limited navigations, got no base map. I got cell phone numbers and uh, store opening hours and closing and everything. And then my running sheet, which is the order of all the towns, uh, the altitude of the climbs and elevations and things. So, bunch of info at the fingertips. The idea is that you eat, sort out where you're going, everything, all the navigation without stopping. Idaho's been beautiful. 
a whole bunch of elk or deer or whatever running right in front of me. I've seen hundreds this trip already. Woo! Just popped out in this mad lake. Camera's not doing it justice, but this is unreal. Another pit talk tonight. I'm in uh, Culver Bay area. It's absolutely freezing. So this is quite nice and warm in here. Good morning. At the top of Togwadi Pass. It took me way too long to get up here. I'm up at 3,000 meters. Um, it's snowy and cold. And other few passes today. I want to get to as close as close to Atlantic City as possible, so I can cross the Great Basin tomorrow. Um, I'm behind my schedule. <laughs> Got like four and a half hours sleep last night. Usually been getting about four, so but still only halfway through this event, so I'm happy taking the time. We got two moose here. What are they gonna do? Bit of a race update. I'm sitting in sixth, which to be honest I'm pleasantly surprised with after the race I'm having. Like I haven't done the perfect execution, that's for sure. But obviously the form's good still. Could be time to turn it up, we'll see. I'm still happy with six. Bit of a hike up this. This is the last day in Grizzly Zone. This is prime country. Not that I know that, but... I'm on the whistle program. That'll really scare them. Long overdue for a new set of pads. Wow. I was up at 2, finally decided to have a shorter sleep than 4 hours, just had 3, um, and I'm making my way from Pinedale to Atlantic City, and then from there across the Great Basin of Wyoming, so thought I'd better leave early, get it done, get across to Wham Sutter, maybe even further Savory or Brush Mountain Lodge. You know, today I go past the halfway mark and hopefully a bit less sleep in early morning and I can just put myself in no man's land and just make my way south is the plan. Well, it's raining on me, but the bigger news is that the top three are halfway over to Wamsa and it looks like it's rained and they're sort of stuck. So um, myself, Chris, and Ezra are right behind me and we're making some time on them. Uh, it's a bit to clear up, so we should be able to cross the basin at some point today. <sighs> well, it's raining. I'm real tired. I can't stand the bike. So I'm just gonna sleep. I don't think there's a rush to get there. The later I get to that basin, the drier it will be. I'm just gonna set my alarm for 30 minutes. Oh, trudging through this soft, soft road. 
since 2 a.m. Very upright. sucks just walking for kilometers if I try and ride I just clog up no chance Ibi. lonely times didn't really give a good explanation of what happened today um, basically the lead three um, were stuck in this mud and it would have been worse um, so they had to sort of bivvy up here for f quite a few hours. Um, Chris and I got to Atlanta City and then rather than going for the cross immediately to join these guys, we are like, well, there's no point because if they can't move, we may as well have a decent bed, get some decent food. And then when we see them start to move, then we can, you know, pounce. Anyway, we were just we just booked some uh, a wee cabin there, and then they started to move, and they sort of sprung it on us. So they managed to get out of this mud, and now they're riding off into the distance again. So we got all the bikes ready and set off, but in that time, we sort of let the pack get pretty close. So Chris and I are making our way to Wham Sutter. There's a 24/7 subway there. So, looking forward to that. So, it's been a big day. I'm over it. I was already gutted to have 30k to get to Wham Sutta to find somewhere to sleep. And now I'm just trying to walk this pile of shit. Because the thunderstorm came through and fucked the road. After an hour and a half of walking, cleaning, and just sliding around everywhere. I've managed to get my bike working. Huge relief. So I just got 25 k's to ride. I've been up and at it for over 24 hours now, so I'm very tired. So that terrible evening and 3.30 a.m. arrival at Wham Sutter brought me to the halfway point of the route. My floundering in the mud meant I'd slip back to seventh position. But as I'd been investing a lot of time into quality sleep and food, I had high hopes of moving my way up the leaderboard in the second half. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying following along, check out part two, because the route definitely starts taking a bigger toll on me. This is a big job to sign up for. What could possibly go wrong? Oh. I didn't make the resupply. I'll try not to f*** this up. Seeing some crap out there. Not enjoying it. He's f***ed it at the last hurdle. It's just hard. Very dizzy. I'm going nowhere.